Really now we are in uh, the area called H2. This is under uh, the agreement of Oslo, after the agreement of Oslo, which divided Hebron to two sides. One side called H1, that side, okay, which full of life. And after these rocks, it is H2. Which one is under the uh, Palestinian Authority control and this side under the Israeli Authority control completely. And what you see in there, it's a full of light, there is the, the Palestinian police and here the rocks. It's a closed, blocked all of the, the street from here. This street called the Shohada Street, it leads to the old city. From here, it was full of life and the transportation coming from here uh, and within five minutes we will be near the Abraham Mosque. Now it's completely closed. The checkpoint here also divided uh, the city. Uh, it's now really uh, locked completely. Then it's an electronic checkpoint. The Palestinians who are inside, they are living in a very extreme situation there. Uh, the situation is extremely tense and all of the shops are closed. There is no shops, no clinics, uh, no transportation, nothing. Uh, if, any, if you want to buy anything, we have to come through that checkpoint and to go to each one here to buy our goods on our shoulders and to pass that checkpoint until we arrive at our houses. If any emergency case is a bit at night, also we have to carry the patient until that checkpoint. If it's open also, sometimes it's closed. They didn't allow to, to the patients even to cross. If it's open, so we can pass the checkpoint and the ambulance waited us behind these rocks to ambulance the hospital, the, uh, the, the patient to the uh, to the patient to the hospital. Yes. And the settlers attacked all of the Palestinians inside this house. They obliged them to to move from here, as you see. How they attacked them, how they destroyed everything inside the house. Not only this house, but all of the Palestinians' houses here. And now when we arrive to our house, my house, you will see a footage about how they destroyed all of the Palestinians' houses with during the curfew. Uh, now you see, this is uh, the place, it's called now Beit Hadassah. It used to be on Raskul, this place. And they kicked on Roa from it since the year 1976. Uh, and uh, on what till now, really, they, they paid the rent for the owner and they expand their areas. By the way, you can see that house, it was Palestinians, and they kicked out all of the Palestinians from it. That's become a settlement, also, it's called Beit Hadassah, all of it. And these houses, you see it, also, they demolished the houses from here, the old houses, and they construct a new house. In that place, you see the old houses, and they construct the new buildings on its roofs yes. in order to they want to clear everything in front of them they didn't want to see any palestinians always they pretended that this is our lands and it's a promise from god to us in this place it used to be shops and houses also they demolished it completely everything happened in the year 1976 uh, this house now uh, behind us, uh, really this house was Palestinians also and the settlers, the soldiers, they came and confiscated it. They destroyed everything inside it and they kicked the Palestinians out. They put uh, the soldiers, they put a checkpoint on its roof and unfortunately now, and I'm sorry about my statements, they, it's now used as a center of uh, drugs and sex. This place, as you see, it was a Palestinian gas station. Uh, it's confiscated also from them since, uh, since the year 1976. And they evacuated Palestinians from it. It's now a health center and a settler living in it. You see the ambulance here. And that shops, it was the main jewelry market in Hebron. Now it's closed completely. And they kicked out all of the Palestinians as well. It was a Palestinian school, it's called Osama ibn al munkir And the lately dates of the year 1976, the settlers came and with the, uh, the coordination of the army and they demolished that school and construct that new building. It's called now Beit Romano. And uh, this place now, it's a uh, settlement and religious institute for them called Yeshiva, which learn only Torah in it.
Now this is Kurtova school and the main access of the Kurtova school is from here. It's closed completely as you see with the barbed wire reservoirs. It's not allowed to anyone to pass through the street to come here. Just only this alternative way to, to the school. And really this this place we just only recently we made rehabilitation for it. It's just only a track from here or a path uh, without anything. And uh, you can realize it in the video. And this fence also recently construct in order to protect our children from the escalations and the harassments of the settlers. And by the way, this is a daily harassment of them against our children. And by the way, this uh, this school used to learn in it about 450 students. After the curfew, which was imposed completely here from the year 2000 until the end of the year 2003, there is no school in that time. And most of the Palestinians who used to live here, they are left because of the escalations and harassment of the settlers. In uh, the beginning of the year 2004, uh, the soldiers lifted the curfew three hours daily. It was an opportunity for us to open the school and to send our children to the school. We realized that the number decreased from 450 to 80 students only. Uh, how, we, how we want to the school to resist in that time, and they have a lot of escalations, a lot of harassments. We talk with a lot of people, we talk with the Brazilian authority, and there is no protection for our children. So, as individual things, we done, we talk with the uh, World Council of the Churches, and they sent to us internationals in order to run the school here and to uh, try to protect our children from the escalations of the settlers. And with what we want to do in uh, order to, to increase the number. We talk with the Minister of Education uh, to let the Kurtoba school as a mixed school. It was a girl's school and we want to do as a mixed uh, school in order to increase the number really. In the beginning they, they refused. But after that, we convinced them and we managed to do it as a, as a committee of the parents also. Uh, nowadays, uh, the number is 123. This year, we hope that the number will increase to uh, 200 students. Okay. Now you can look this Palestinian house in two parts. One part is found from the settlers and the other uh, still with Palestinians. The settlers, these counted several times in order to force the Palestinians who are living here in order to move the, from here. But they, they didn't manage them to, them to move, so they stay in the, the next part and they still resist here. This is the Palestinians really. This is how we are resist here. Always we came here and encouraged them to stay, to resist, to stay here, even though the settlers burned the house several times. Uh, this is a this is place it used to be the main central bus station in Hebron. Uh, it's now a soldier camp and settlers who are living in it. That means that the settlers and the soldiers always eat from the same, uh, the same food and they drink from the same water and they're protected with the soldiers every time. And really this is against Geneva Convention and UN Declarations of Human Rights. The soldiers must have protected the occupied people also. Uh, this place really, as I mentioned, it used to be uh, a main central bus station and the soldiers who are in it, it's a big one, you see from here until the end of there, it's 2,000 soldiers living in that place. And you see, this is, this is a Shuhada street, this is a Shuhada street, which we've been in the beginning in it, with the transportation just only five minutes from the center of the city, Babi Zawiya, until that house is there. Okay, you see how big it's Hebron here, just only five minutes of transportation. Now because there is no transportation, of the Palestinians, all of the Palestinians used to come as this old man, which we saw him now. They came through the cemetery here, up, 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 and then he come here in order to go to the H1 there, and he must uh, uh, pass that horrible checkpoint in the beginning of the street, and the soldiers must check every bag in our hands. Imagine that those Palestinians have an emergency cases of it at night, a sick man or something like, like this. What shall they do? They have to carry the patients from here until the checkpoint there. And to pass the checkpoint if it's opened. 
Always the soldiers, the soldiers at night, especially they close the checkpoint and they detain the Palestinians there. A lot of people they pass the way near the checkpoint. A lot of women they get burned in the street. But the most incredible thing that this is an Islamic cemetery. Okay, it's not allowed to us now to bury our beloved when they pass the way in these cemeteries. <laughs> Now you can see this is the street of Tel Almeida and from up also it's divided to the right side and to the left side. The Palestinians who used to live in the right side, it's allowed to them to go there and there is a fence. You can see iron fence there and the Palestinians must behind it, must walk behind it because there is a checkpoint beside it. Who are living in the left side, it's not allowed to them to come to, to pass there, like me, it's not allowed to me to go there and my neighborhood also as well. Because there is another checkpoint inside and another checkpoint and the settlements lie there. The settlements was called uh, Ramat Ishai. So it's not allowed. We found an alternative way from here and it's now our original way. <laughs> Uh, now you can see this is the settlement from there, and it's called Ramat Ishai. It's since uh, it's right here since the year 1986. Now we will see it. So we will be close to it. You will see it more. And this is my house. Uh, now we want to use this access. Even this access to my house two years ago, it was closed completely with barbed wire and reservoir. It's not allowed to us to pass it through that access until we have take a resolution from the Israeli High Court and they give it with between two, two quotation humanitarian reasons they allowed to us to, to pass it through here. From where we can use our access, it's from here. We used to climb from this fence to my house. Even when my wife was pregnant, okay, I carry her from there, then there, then I go out to the main street. This settlement, it's called Ramati Shai, it's over us as you see. And it's called Ramat Ishai. It's right here since the year 1986. The settlers who are living inside, all of them are phonetic settlers. Uh, the leader of them, he called Baruch Marzel from Kach Movement, as well known in uh, Israel, or Kahana Movement, as well known in the States. Now they changed their name, their names. They called themselves Jewish Defense League. And Baruch Marzel, he's the leader of Jewish Defense League in all over the world, and all over the settlers. See. And uh, this piece of land really it belongs to me. It's confiscated from them. They put a letter here in order to explain their areas, but the issue is still in the court. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see, my land is grown with olives and the grapes. It's not allowed to me to, to harvest my olives, but I managed in the year to, uh, 2007 to have a resolution from the Israeli High Court with coordination of Israeli human rights organizations. Uh, to harvest my olives with the protection of the soldiers. I said to myself in that time, even though I have this resolution, but my deceptors attacked us. So I invited all of the Israeli human rights organizations and Amnesty International organization and uh, a lot of internationals of my friends uh, to be as witnesses about what go on here. What we expected happened, the settlers attacked us seriously. We didn't manage to harvest anything. And remember it, you will see the video now. <laughs>